good morning. Back there is my Kona Remote 160. Um, it's had a whole bunch of upgrades since the initial build, including some goodies from C6, some 29er wheels, uh, Shimano XT trail brakes, and of course the Shimano XT Di2 group set. Uh, so I come to that last part, I needed to find a solution to allow the computer to understand that I was using electronic shifting. And to do that, I downloaded an app called Emacs on my iPhone, but that app can do a whole lot more. So in this video, I'll explain how that app works and how it can make a Shimano Steps equipped e-bike a whole lot better. Here goes. So the biggest upgrade that I've done uh, to the bike is actually an external upgrade, it's on my phone. Um, I downloaded an app called Emacs. Um, Emacs allows you to do a lot of adjustments to a Shimano bike without having to go to a dealer, uh, which for me was a huge thing. I wanted to be able to connect my uh, Shimano 11-speed DI XTDI 2 group set to my bike. Uh, by standard, the bike ships with a mechanical shifter. If you try and plug an electronic shifter in, it throws an error and tells you that, you, that it can't actually work with electronic shifter. So I downloaded the, the software after finding, eventually I actually found it on some forum somewhere where somebody had explained how they managed to get their system to work without going to a shop to get it to work. Um, and that's what uh, made me download the software. But the software has way more than that. So I want to show you that. So, I open the Emacs um, app and I power on my bike. It just takes a second. So there's the bike powering up. You can see the screen is now on um, the standard screen. You've got all your different modes. And the, the thing that's different on this, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a 9. That 9 is telling me that I'm in the ninth gear. If I shift gears on the bike, um, it tells me what gear I'm in and obviously gives me a speed setting there. So now I'm in the fifth gear. But the most important thing is let's show you how the app itself actually works. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your um, settings menu by pushing the settings button at the bottom here until the menu comes up. Scroll down with the um, assist buttons over there to get to your Bluetooth LE select Bluetooth LE and then select start once it's started on the app you connect you press the connect bike it sees the motor immediately and it connects to the bike once you're in there the next button is the uh, bike information button you click on that button and it's basically got no information over the bike but you can click the get bike information button and then it goes through a process of getting all the information from the motor it gets the firmware version and everything else that it needs and you'll see at the top here I have a license key which I got from Emacs now my app is actually completely open to do all the uh, things that are possible to do with the app and that license key is actually bonded to the electric serial number of the motor what that means is that you can't actually um, move the app from one person to another it's, it's connected to a bike itself so once I've got the bike information I can go back and the next step that I have is, or the next option that I have is the motor speed mode. Now that's pretty cool because what it allows me to do is I can set the destination of where this bike is actually being used. Um, so here in Europe and in Asia, we're only allowed to ride with 25 kilometers an hour assistance. Uh, so obviously the bike can ride faster than 25 kilometers an hour, but you have to actually make it go faster than 25 kilometers an hour um, and you don't have the assistance. In the US, they're allowed to ride at 20 miles per hour, which is 32 kilometers an hour. So you're basically getting an extra 7 kilometers an hour um, assistance, which is really great, especially like if you're riding in traffic and stuff. So I have set mine to 32 kilometers an hour, and then I would have pushed the program uh, parameters to bike button. And now I'm back at the, um, me or the menu for uh, motor speed settings. The next thing I can do, which is quite useful, especially for me, I'm running a 29er wheel on a bike that came shipped, shipped with a 27.5 plus wheel. Uh, there's about an 8 centimeters circumference difference in that wheel, so I'm able to now, with wheel circumference settings, go in and give it the exact wheel circumference of my 29er wheel, which means that the motor won't cut out too early because it won't have a false uh, speed reading anymore. 
So I've programmed the uh, 2325 in, which gives me the exact circumference of these wheels. So when I'm doing 20 kilometers on the clock, I'm also getting 20 kilometers an hour on my Garmin, which means that it's actually accurate. Uh, again, you can program that in. We're going to go back. So the next one that is grayed out on mine is the Motor Max Speed setting. Now it's grayed out on mine because I'm running the latest firmware on the motor. If I roll my firmware back, which you can do if you have uh, somebody with uh, the right equipment at a Shimano uh, dealer or something like that that would help you, you could actually roll your um, firmware back to the setting that allows you to then open that up. The bike then will assist you all the way up to 60 kilometers now, which is, is pretty fast. Um, it's not something that I really want to do, so I'm going to leave my bike in the current uh, firmware setting and I'm just going to run it as it is. But yeah, you could get 60 kilometers an hour assistance out of the bike. And just as a note, if you reset your bike, if at some point you have some kind of problem, you have a warranty issue or something like that, and you reset all the parameters back to the stock settings that come from Shimano, you shouldn't have a warranty issue at all. Obviously, if you sent the bike back to Shimano with like the motor, uh, the firmware hacked and stuff like that, they would have a problem. But if you just go back and reset everything with the Emacs uh, software that they provide, they have a lot of information on their website, you would be able to just um, reset everything and there wouldn't be a warranty problem. I'm going to go back to my main menu here. Um, so we've done motor performance settings, uh, sorry, we've done motor speed settings. Motor performance settings is the next step. Here you can um, basically tell the motor or you can tell your step system how much assistance you want in each mode. So you've got the eco, the trail and the boost mode uh, in the Shimano system. In eco, I think this is pretty much the standard, I haven't actually messed with this, so, uh, so in eco by a standard you would have 40% um, assistance, in trail you would have 90% assistance, in boost you would have 300% assistance. So just to explain that, eco mode with 40% more assistance means basically if you could pedal 100 watts, so if you could put 100 watts through the pedals, the motor would see that you're putting in 100 watts and give you 40% more, which would mean that you would be pedaling in it effectively at 140 watts. In trail you would be pedaling with 90% more, so you'd effectively be pedaling at 190 watts. And in boost mode you would get 300% more, which means that you would effectively be pedaling at 400 watts. You can also set the max power uh, to higher than 500, I think to 550. So you could se select default parameters in this as well, which means that you can set it back. Uh, you can program that to your bike. I'm going to go back to main. The next one was where I was really um, interested, it's the special setting. There's some settings for your light which are uh, available. Um, I don't run lights so it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but the main thing here was I could set a mechanical or an electronic derailleur. Um, and that is what allowed me to now run this XTDI system on the bike. Um, so I don't get an error anymore, I just uh, set electronic derailleur and I program that to the bike. Um, and everything worked. The final one here at the bottom is the about screen and basically it's the legal disclaimer. Um, just be aware of the disclaimer, read this because it is important. Uh, it's, it's the disclaimer from the software developer and it's important to, to look at what, they've, what they're disclaiming so that you don't um, have problems at a later stage. I'm going to go back to main here. So now when I've finished everything and I've uploaded everything to the bike, I would uh, click the disconnect bike button. Um, if I'd done some changes at that, this point, there would be um, a screen that says accept the settings. On the computer, I haven't done any changes. You'll see it's just gone back and I've now got the standard screen and everything works again. I've got my eco, trail and boost mode and everything's there. So that's that. Yeah.